So this problem is to solve the system of linear equations by the elimination method, not the substitution method. With the substitution method, you solve for one of the equations for one of the variables in terms of the other, like maybe solve the first equation for x in terms of y, substitute it into the second equation, getting an equation only involving y, solve that equation for y, and then substitute back in to find x. With elimination, you're trying to eliminate one of the variables in one of the equations by doing some algebra operations with these equations. Remember what the logic is. The logic of equation solving is when you write this system and you're trying to solve it, you're really assuming there's a solution. That assumption actually could be wrong. We will encounter situations where that assumption is wrong and we'll get some sort of contradiction at the end, like one equals zero, which is obviously not true. If that happens, that means the original assumption that there's a solution is wrong and therefore there's no solution. There are systems like that, okay? Two parallel lines that don't inter intersect is one simple example of a system that would not have any solutions. But I'm assuming there's a solution and based on that assumption, I'm going to do algebra operations to these equations that will give me new equations that must be true if these equations are true. And one thing that I see that would be a convenient thing to do is if I multiply the first equation by, say, negative 2, to give me a negative 2x right there, and add it to the second equation, negative 2x plus 2x would be 0x, 0. X, zero and the x would be eliminated. That's why it's called the elimination method. And I'd get an equation only involving y. In fact, a fairly simple equation in the second case. So I'm gonna multiply, I'll show more steps than you really need to here. I'm gonna multiply the first equation, I'll call it row one by negative two. I'm gonna add it to the second row, the second equation, and put the answer in that second row. So these R stand for rows, but they really mean equations as well in this context. Well, I'll do that in two steps, in two steps. First, I'll show the result of what I get when I multiply the first equation by negative two. It's negative two X minus six Y equals negative eight. And I'm leaving the second equation alone, just 2x minus 5y equals 3 again. Now I'm going to do the second part of this. I'm going to add the two equations. I could put a line here and add them and put the answer down here. But for another purpose, I'm going to still keep that first equation the same, negative 2x minus 6y minus 8 add the two equations, negative 2x plus 2x is 0x. I could put a zero there. Oops, this is a equals negative eight, sorry. Negative 6y minus five plus negative 5y is negative 11y. And negative eight plus three is negative five. That's an e that second equation is easy to solve for y, right? Now I'm gonna multiply the second equation by negative 1 11th effectively divide by negative 11 and put the new answer in that second equation. I'll write that as negative uh, 1 11th times the second equation, which is the second row, put the answer in the second row. That's how I'm notating it there. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the first equation again, negative 2x minus 6y minus equals negative 8. But if I multiply the second equation by negative 1 11th, the negative 11 cancels on the left, and on the right, negative 5 times negative 1 11 is positive 5 11 You get that? No, catch me if I make a mistake here. Now, effectively, we can substitute that back into the first equation in place of y and solve for x. But actually, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do an elimination again. I'm going to try to eliminate the y by multiplying this equation by something and adding it to that one. What should I multiply this by? How about positive six? Because six Y plus negative six Y is zero Y, zero. So I'm gonna mul multiply the second equation by positive six, add it to the first equation and put the answer in the first equation. I won't bother actually writing six Y equals 30 over 11 though, because 
I've already got Y solved, so why, so why bother? I'm just going to leave the second equation as is, Y equals 5 elevenths. If I multiply the second equation by 6 and add it to the first, the negative 2X stays as it is. 6Y plus negative 6Y is 0Y again, so that goes away. That gets eliminated. Okay, the last thing to do is a little tricky. 6 times 5 elevenths needs to get added to negative 8. In other words, you need to subtract 8. So I'll have to get a common denominator of 11. 30 elevenths minus 88 elevenths. Negative 58 elevenths. Is that right? I made a mistake. People get that. Well, okay, that's that's not X yet, but... Okay, now I'll multiply the first equation by negative one half. I, I could also think of the first equation as this divided by negative two, and that would be another way to think of it right from the scratch. But if I divide both sides of that by negative two, I'll get negative 29 or positive 29 11 for X. Mm -hmm. I said you could do that. You could take this and substitute it up there and solve for X, but I'm purposely doing it by elimination again, because that's now what's going to generalize to what's called the matrix formula of the elimination, elimination method. Okay, I'm going to show you one more method here. This is still the same method, just with different notation. And I'm going to call it augmented... I don't know why I capitalized that. Matrix form. I guess I capitalized everything. In augmented matrix form, we can do the elimination method, which is going to be the exact same steps we just did, except you're not going to see any equations. You're just going to see numbers in a matrix, an array of numbers. What are the numbers going to start with? They're going to start with the coefficients that you see up here. The one, the three, the four, the two, the negative five, the three. I call it an augmented matrix because I'm including the numbers to the right of the equal sign. If you did not include the numbers to the right of the equal sign, you'd just call it a coefficient matrix. If you just include the numbers to the left of the equal sign, that's just a coefficient matrix. If you include them, that's called an augmented matrix. We're augmenting, augmenting the coefficient matrix with the numbers on the right hand side. One, three, four, two, negative five, three. To remind yourself that it's an augmented matrix. When you're doing this by hand, I like to do this. I like to put a dashed vertical line right here just to remind myself that those numbers to the right of the dashed vertical line come from the numbers on the right hand side of the, of the system of equations. Technically speaking, you don't have to do that. You don't have to put a dash vertical line there. But if you don't, you might forget that it's an augmented matrix. So again, I'm going to do the same steps as I did before. What was my first step? Negative two times row one plus row two, put the answer in row two. I'm just going to essentially jump from right here to here, except I'm not even going to bother changing the first row this time. That's actually a little more convenient. I'm going to keep that first row or corresponding to the first equation as is. Effectively, so I don't have to be quite so funny at the very last step there. Divided by negative two. I won't have to do that. I'm multiplying row one by negative two adding it to row two and putting the answer in row two, effectively the same thing I did with the equations before. What happens if I multiply one uh, this row by negative two, the one gets multiplied by negative two, then added to two there to give me zero there. And here I really do want to put the zero corresponding to zero times X. When you have it up here, I didn't bother putting a zero X there. But if you want to keep the matrix structure of this augmented matrix, this two by three augmented matrix consistent, you should put a zero there. 
Negative two times three is negative six. Negative six plus negative five is negative 11, just like we got before. Negative two times four is negative eight. Negative eight plus three is negative five, just like we got before. Sure. I'm gonna to continue to put my dash vertical line there to continue to remind myself that this is an augmented matrix. Next thing we did back up here was we divided this equation by negative 11. I'll do the same thing here. I'll divide this row by negative 11. Negative a 1 11 times row two, put the answer in row two is my next overall step here. Leave row one as is. Zero times negative 1 11 is still zero. Negative 11 times negative 1 11 is positive one. Negative five times negative 1 11 is positive 5 11. And yes, still an augmented matrix. This last row now corresponds to y equals 5 11, just like we got right there. Now I want to get a zero above this one to eliminate the y effectively in the first equation. This is going to mean doing something slightly different than I did up here because up here I kept the first equation in its altered form look over here, and multiply this equation by 6 to eliminate the negative 6y. But now I, I kept the first equation in its original form. I'm going to multiply the second row by negative 3 and add to the first row to eliminate that 3. <clears throat> negative 3 times row 2 plus row 1. Put the answer in row 1. It's got to be a 0. And that has to stay a 1 because Zero times negative three is still zero. And zero plus one is one. The first row doesn't change in these two spots. And the second row doesn't change because I'm not changing the second row with this operation. The only thing that really changed, well, this three does convert to a zero, but that's easy. The only thing that takes a little work is figuring out what goes right there. I need to do negative three, negative three times five elevenths and add it to the four. And this should get the same answer as before. Now the common denominator is 11. Yes, 29 elevenths. That is the same answer as before. This augmented matrix corresponds to a very simple system of equations. X equals 29 elevenths and Y equals 5 elevenths. And that's not two solutions. This is one solution of the system of linear equations as a point. It's the point with coordinates 29 elevenths, 5 elevenths. Typically, we think of this as an ordinary rectangular coordinates. But like I've mentioned before, you, you could think of it as in another coordinate system if you wanted to. Like if x represented the r coordinate, y the theta coordinate, you could interpret this in terms of polar coordinates. We don't typically do that. I just was trying to emphasize that you can. We're just used to thinking in rectangular coordinates because it seems simplest. I guess I would say it is simplest, but it's not always the most useful. Again, the logic is we're starting by assuming there's a solution and effectively what we've done is we've said, if there is a solution, it's gotta be this. There can't be any, any others. To truly prove this is, is a solution, you need to check it. Checking is not just for making sure you didn't make a mistake, technically speaking. It's for proving that it really works. So you'd have to plug in X equals 29 elevens here and here, and Y equals five elevens here and here, and get in the first case four, and in the second case three, when you simplify. I'm not gonna take the time to do that, but that's technically what's required for proof. This can be thought of in a higher level way, which I want to spend a few minutes on right now. This is important, okay? Systems of linear equations, it turns out, are often useful to think about geometrically. We've already talked about one way to think about it geometrically. These equations both define two lines in the plane. And what we've just found 
we talked about this not today, but before, is that this is their point of intersection. But there's another way to think about it geometrically that's perhaps even more important because it applies to higher dimensional thinking. I mean, you can you can think about these higher dimensionally as well in the same kind of way I just mentioned. Treat the right-hand sides effectively as variables is the starting point for this higher way of thinking about things. But wait a minute, they're not variables, they're four and three. Well, yeah, for this particular system, they're four and three, but maybe I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to know how to solve this system of equations in general if I have arbitrary numbers over there. Should I use X and Y? No, because they're already being used. Use different letters. What letters? I like to use U and V. And for emphasis, I'm also going to turn the system of equations around and put the U and the V on the left. Same equations, same um, expressions involving X and Y as before. <laughs> X plus 3Y and 2X minus 5Y. Now, again, I could have the U and the V on the right instead of the left. And if I did so, I could try to do the exact same row operations to try to solve for X and Y in terms of U and V. That could be done. In fact, you should be able to do it, though I'm not going to do it today. If I put a U and a V or U and a V here, where U and V are arbitrary, these same row operations would ultimately give me X and Y in terms of U and V as functions of U and V. Effectively, when I'm given these functions of X and Y, what I've got here, you could think of as being two distinct functions of X and Y, giving me two new quantities that I'm calling U and V. Or, you could think of these equations as a pair. Give me a point x comma y as input and give me another point u comma v as output. And when you think of it that, that way, it's called a linear transformation. This defines a linear transformation. A linear transformation is a special kind of function that for us typically will be higher dimensional kind of function. Technically, you can define them in one dimension as well, but most typically for us will be a higher dimensional kind of function taking points as input, in this case, x comma y, and give me points as output, in this case, u comma v. It's also linear in the sense that you only have first powers of X and Y, not second powers, not square roots, not exponential functions of X and Y. It also ends up being important that we're not adding any constants that are true constants. That actually ends up being important for it to be a linear transformation. But just in 30 seconds here, let's illustrate that, for example, we can find what the point X comma Y equals O say two comma negative five gets mapped to under this linear transformation. And if this is the input, <clears throat> what's the output? I'm gonna give the transformation a name T and I'm gonna visualize the transformation, so to speak, with an arrow. T, this transformation is gonna map this point to some other point whose coordinates I'm gonna call U and V. How do I find U and V? Just use these equations. I use the, use the first equation to find U, plug in X equals two and Y equals negative five. If X is two and Y is negative five, I get two minus 15, right? Negative 13 is what U equals. Use the second equation to figure out V. Plug in X is two, Y is negative five. To get two times two is four, Minus five times negative five is plus 25. 
4 plus 25 is 29. The output of this linear transformation when the input is 2, negative 5 is the point negative 13, 29. That's the output when this is the input. And we can visualize this. I guess another comment. We can visualize this by drawing two planes, an XY plane and a UV plane. And saying, if this is my input, 2, negative 5 down there, then my output, negative 13, 29, well, it's off, it's way up here somewhere, I guess. Negative 13, 29 in this UV plane, if the scales were the same. <laughs> And I can do that for any point in the plane. This is like the domain. This is like the codomain, I call it. I typically try to avoid the word range in here. This is the domain of the linear transformation. This is the codomain. This is essential for this course. This is not a throwaway idea that I'm just talking about right now. This is where it starts to get hard as far as the linear algebra goes. <clears throat> 